Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm here with Liza Jane. She has just put out her newest single titled Carry On, and I'm really excited to talk to her about it. Liza, thank you so much for coming on today. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, what part of the world are you in? What's going on? Um, I'm from Key West, Florida, but I live in Los Angeles and Hollywood now. Oh, I cool. recently moved here. Mm -hmm. Nice. How are you like in the LA life? I like it a lot. I moved here before the pandemic, but then I changed places. I went back home during the first lockdown and then got back in August. It's been like this long um, transition since however long this pandemic has been going on. So. Yeah, and it's been tough in LA. I'm also in LA myself, so I know how you feel. Okay. It's, a, it's a rough life, but you've obviously been staying busy. You're making music, mm -hmm. you're doing things, you're using that boredom or whatever and using it to your advantage um so obviously i want to talk about the single here first thing i want to talk about is the lyrical content basically i would love for you to sort of break down the song and let everyone know what it's all about well, my song is carry on and it's about well i was inspired to write it because i was talking about my experiences with people and my views on the world and that's how i write my music so it was about basically how you, you go this way, you go that way. That's a line in the song. And some people just really don't vibe and you start off well and you get to know each other. Things are good, but sometimes people don't understand you and they judge you and they turn out to not be the most genuine people. And you end up having to go separate paths. So that is one aspect of it. And another is that there's so many things going on in the world and so many people you know, it's not always positive and majority of the time it's been really negative, really bad. And yeah. we, the only choice we have is to carry on. And I that's love, I mean, only... yeah. it's sort of like the dual message here. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I mean, LA in general, you're definitely going to run across a couple of fake people here and there, but I, I guess mm -hmm. sort of in life. Um, but it is a positive message overall. I think that it takes a strong person to even make that realization that you you need to move on. A lot of yeah. people stay stuck in terrible situations and just kind of like throw their hands up. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you've made that realization and you wrote a song about it kind of says a lot here. Thanks. And yeah, it's definitely not easy. I mean, I think all of us, I've been, I wrote the song from a place of being well, in a, I'm in a better place now, but in a place where some days it's hard to carry on and some days yeah. you're like, oh, is it worth it? but you just, that's the best, that's the only option that you have. You either let totally. it consume you or you can make something good out of the bad circumstances or whatever is going on and then have that inspire you to move on. And through me, music is what has kept me going through everything. And that has been my goal. That has been my purpose. How, what I feel in life is my drive to move forward. Right. So yeah, you got to take it day by day. It's not mm -hmm. something that you just set and forget. Yeah, every day. <laughs> yeah. So I really want to hear about the production side of things on the song because listening on like a great pair of headphones is necessary for everyone who's going to get into it because there's a lot of like beautiful subtleties and it's just got this very like vibrant sound. So I want to hear all about how it got made basically. Yeah, I wrote this um, actually in the beginning of the pandemic. And it's been a very long process. I'm very, yeah. I keep it, I think every artist can relate. We want it to be as perfect as possible before we Always. release it. So sometimes <laughs> it's delayed and a lot of things with the pandemic made it delayed, but I'm really grateful with how it turned out. And I'm really excited. Um, Gemini Music, he, I record at West Coast Customs here in Burbank and they have a studio there. So he produced it. Um, I co-wrote it with, Jay Lauren and she co-wrote Hollywood's Bleeding by Post Malone so that was a great opportunity that he introduced me to her yeah um and then we had a rapper Young Miller and he is doing the feature we filmed a whole music video production of choreography backup dancers so it's just really like escalated um, the steps involved so that's amazing I was actually I wanted to hear all about the collaboration side of things it always kind of like blows my mind when it's like 
hey, random person or friend, will you come like feature on a song with me? So who, who is this person to you and how'd you get them on the track? Luckily, this is Gemini, the producer. It was his friend and he records oh, okay. at the studio and he's a pretty established rapper. And he introduced us and he loved my song and he wanted to be a feature on it. So it was That's great. Awesome. That was pretty simple then. Yeah, it nice. was. He introduced me. Yeah. He, it was like, I was very fortunate because he's introduced me to a lot of people and I had a good opportunity working with him and it's been really fun. That's cool. Yeah, one thing I was going to say is like, normally when I hear collaborations, you listen to it and it's a 50-50 split, but I really like that he sort of just like, it, it was a lot of background, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you can, he's, de he's there, he's prominent in the song, but you definitely take center stage and it really is like a featuring. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I think it turned out great. It now, is, it was great. This is sort of the obvious question, but I can only assume that there's more music on the way from you. So I want to know what you can say mm -hmm. and what you can't say about that. Oh, you know, I'll say it. I feel like I've waited long enough to uh, shine yeah, this yeah. year. And um, no, it's, I have a whole EP prepared. I've been kind of deciding how I want to do like the release of all of this. So I have things planned up for the next few weeks and um, all of this song hints is going to be on an EP. So with the awesome. other songs. <laughs> is there a potential release date for it? You're still trying to figure out the specifics. Still trying to figure that out. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I like today's day and age, it's all about the single releases. So I say, take it slow. You've, you've come this far. You've obviously been working on this for a long time now. So don't rush it. And uh, yeah. our, our hands are kind of still up in the air when it comes to touring and music in general. So mm -hmm. definitely take it easy. And that is my favorite thing. So that is definitely something that I'm looking forward to planning next and then performing these songs live. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're going to be great live. I can already tell. Thank you. Um, on the other songs, are you going to be looking to experiment in sound? Or are they going to have a very similar feel to them? I feel like they're a little experimental. One of them is kind of like an EDM dance style too. Ooh. So it's like, like a little first EDM track. Not like straight up EDM, but just a... Yeah, 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 a touch. And, um, yeah, and one of them I would say is kind of rock vibes. I was inspired by Evanescence and kind of awesome. Linkin Park with this song. So I'm really excited about that one. That's awesome. They all fit a general theme and who I am, but I have like multiple sides of music that I like. So I wanted to incorporate everything that I like. Because well, I don't, I yeah. don't think artists should be in you no. know, one box. No, there's too much music out there. It would be impossible to say I'm going to want to sound like this person. It's just not. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. let's talk about that though so you just mentioned a couple great artists people that I've loved and listened to forever was there any specific inspiration for this song or is it kind of just a culmination of everything that you grew up listening to it would be that and then also this song was kind of about well it was about a relationship where I want to be with this person again at the time that I wrote it sure and I was having all these nightmares and I was it's called dream tonight. So I'm hoping I could dream tonight of you. So instead of having these nightmares and these things that I'm thinking and all the things going on in my mind that you can switch over that nightmare to then dreaming about that person. So it's kind of like a dreamy song and yeah. about what I want to be happening while I'm sleeping. That would be a crazy music video. I'm like imagining yeah. in my mind of like getting inside someone's head and seeing that play out. That's why I have some good ideas for a music video with that. Oh, nice. that'll be fun. Okay, so this is sort of like a two-part question, but first off, how long have you been making music for? Uh, I wrote my first song around 10, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. and I went to New York City, and I recorded. That was the first place I recorded wow. my song. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, then the follow-up to that. So mm -hmm. obviously, you were young, so this may be a tough one, but were there any specific albums that you listened to or at least artists in your life that you heard and they just had such a profound effect on you that you were like, nothing else matters. I just want to make music. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's so many. Um, yeah. I'm not well, going to bring you back. <laughs> honestly, well, when I listened to Amy Winehouse, that she was timeless yeah. and an old soul. So her music 
for sure. When I was growing up, I listened to Celine Dion and Cher when I was little, and I used to go around in a blue wig and dance and watch Cher tapes on repeat. Awesome. So I feel uh, like I probably did the same at some point. Yeah, I feel like every good person should. Yeah. And um, I loved uh, dancing, and I did musicals, so I loved dancing to Wicked and Phantom of the Opera inspired uh, me so much because I'm classically trained and I sing in five languages. So, what? Yeah. So I always love singing Phantom of the Opera because it was musical, romantic, and then also like kind of, you know, classical. That's why it's called Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. And that was my favorite musical growing up. Still okay, love it. Hold on. Five languages. I got to stop you right there. So I can only assume that this EP is going to get a five language release and you're going to record it and everything that you know, right? No, I, well, I was thinking about doing that maybe um, because I'm half Italian. So I was thinking maybe I should do a song and feature, you know, Italian lyrics. They're kind of like when uh, Lady Gaga yeah. does like Alejandro and all there of her go. songs. I'm like, that would be cool. I mean, I, I should do that. Mean? maybe maybe that I'll would think be about amazing. That. even mm -hmm. if you could just get a demo going and if it's something mm -hmm. that you want to do in the future I feel like I mean now knowing this information you're in this really like unique situation where you have the knowledge of other languages so yeah. like use it to your advantage differentiate yourself a little bit yeah I think I would that would I'm be gonna write cool. a new song doing that <laughs> there you go I want an all Italian EP that would be sweet um <laughs> So I want to know a little bit about your process as a musician. How does it really start for you? Is it the lyrics? Is it like a guitar riff that goes in your head? Or does it just kind of pop, pop in wherever? It really switches. Sometimes it's just a melody that pops into my head. And then yeah. I will like go play chords on the piano to it. Or I think of the lyrics first. And usually it's like really really random or I'm doing something and then I will get inspired right away and it's like this other I'll just like the song lyrics will just flow out to me and it feels like this spiritual being is kind of taking over and just writing for me so it's like a really interesting experience about it it just it's harder when I like sit down and try to say oh I'm gonna write yeah. a song and then that pressure I Never think happened. artists have to just have that, you know, spark of creativity hit them when it needs to happen. Totally. And that's when the best songs are written. So, right. and it's going to happen at the most unfortunate time too. You're going to be driving, you're going to be in the shower, yeah. you're going to be the farthest away from your phone to record it when it yeah. pops in your head. That's There's just part of the process, I guess. You have to like stop what you're doing and grab your phone and write it down. Yeah. Don't forget the lyrics because it's really <laughs> bad when a good idea and you can't totally. get it back. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. So, I mean, you have been at this for quite a while now. You've gone through the entire process of writing, recording, and getting a song out there. Is there one specific thing that you enjoy the most about the entire process from start to finish? I love seeing the production be completely like put together at the end. Because now I reflect on all the hard work that we put into it, yeah. the process, the, you know, oh, I wish it could come out now, or just how like things could feel like they're not moving fast enough. And then you can go and reflect it and be really grateful for the work that you've put in. So really the final product and then the music video, because putting a visual to something makes it 10 times better, I think. Oh yeah, it holds a, it adds a whole nother level. And just mm -hmm. like, Cause I'm, I'm assuming when you're making the song, you hear it and you see it in your head. And yeah. that's kind of like, yeah, the visual. Plus mm -hmm. like, who doesn't love a good music video? It's shot yeah. nicely. It's just yeah. Like, um, so, I mean, shows are coming back, at least in LA, at least abridged versions of them. Do you have any plans to get out there and do something local or even get out on sort of a wider spectrum? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I had a my EP release party that was scheduled at the Avalon Bardo in the Hollywood, nice. uh, but we postponed that to do music videos instead because of COVID, and we weren't yeah. sure, you know, if the turnout. Yeah. But that is something I definitely am planning, hopefully in September, and then start to do live music here. Sweet. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so hypothetically speaking, let's say you got a show planned and the venue manager comes up to you and he's like 
okay, Eliza, we're super excited to have you, but you can only play one song. Is there one song from the EP that you would choose to play to really wow the crowd or draw them in for more? I say my song Unbreakable, which is coming up. It's funny because we filmed the music video before I filmed the music video to carry on a week before. Oh. So, but they're going to be released backwards. And that so carry on's coming out first and then Unbreakable is going to come out second. Okay. For music video wise. So that song is about, you know, being unbreakable. And I have dancers, like unbreakable women in my awesome. music video that like no matter what people are going to do to us, no matter what life throws at us, we are unbreakable. So that song is really, I think that one hits really powerfully for the EP. And that's what I'm most likely going to title it. I love that. <laughs> All right, so then looking past the EP, what does the next year look like for you? I guess, no, what, do you want, what do you want to happen? What I want to happen, I want to perform live so much and yeah. just really share my music with the world and build mm -hmm. up a big enough audience for people to hear it worldwide. Totally. I think that's definitely, uh, you know, it's possible. I think it's probably better, better chances than not happening. Because if this first song is any indication, then I'm sure the rest are gonna be great as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so looking aside from the music for just a moment, we are a little more than two thirds of the way through this year, which is wild to even say, but are there, are there any personal goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year or anything else that you wanna accomplish as a person? As a person, um, not being so hard on myself still. <laughs> That's been a long goal of mine. I think, yeah, <laughs> we don't always accomplish our goals at the beginning of the year. Totally. But, but I think I, you know, just to kind of reflect and be more mindful and stop always looking into the future and looking into the past and really taking every moment in. So that is a big goal of mine. Like and just to be happy. I think everyone needs some happiness, but the yeah. first thing is, I think you never stop working on that. Cause I feel the same. It's hard to like enjoy the good times when you're always looking towards the future. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mindful of those good times and the experiences. Mm -hmm. So Especially with the, you know, it's so unpredictable now with things that, yeah. and I feel like we've been in this state for the last, since the beginning started. And it's kind of just like, we've been going through the motions. Right. We had one good week. We had like one week, I think like in June, where it was like, oh, things are great. And then, uh, yeah, and then things weren't great and things continue to not be great, but it's gonna Just be have fun. to carry on. Yeah, to carry <laughs> that's all I can on. say. Just keep listening to that and uh, keep, it forward, keep going forward. Um, all right, Liza, I have a couple more questions for you. Okay. One thing I'd love to know is, first off, what are you listening to? And are there any of your friends or I guess local musicians that you like to shout out as well? Yeah, my friend Diamond Tucker, he's amazing. And he just released a new EP. Uh, so you should check that out. Diamond okay. Tucker. All right. He's amazing. Um, yeah, really good person. Great singer and great musician. Also, who am I listening to now? I've been really listening to The Weeknd's new song on repeat. Yeah, do you like it? I mean, obviously, um, if it's on repeat. Yeah, he's just always, yeah, everything yeah. he does, he's perfect. Bad, I agree. <laughs> he just kind of figured it out and just keeps going. Yeah. Nice. Um, always listen to Lana Del Rey. She's kind of just, just really classic to listen to, especially if she's like my bathtub uh, playlist. <laughs> totally. And she's had a busy, a pretty busy past year and a half two mm -hmm. years so yeah a lot of new stuff on the way that's cool yeah. okay cool well I'll definitely check him out and his EP what kind of music is it diamond he's kind of like oh what is he described kind of psychedelic pop yeah mm -hmm. super into that okay cool all right I'll check it out after this okay. yeah thank you yeah all right Liza I have one more question for you mm -hmm. and it's how I like to wrap these things up basically I want to know for the person that is going to discover you from this, 
And for the person that is going to listen to your music for the first time, what is an opening message that you'd like to say to them? I would like to say that, you know, I hope I can inspire you and comfort you and, and tell you that you're not alone. And that I hope my music, no matter what you're going through, you can see that through my lyrics and just know that I'm there for you. And that, I don't know, I wanna share it with you. I love that. That's great. I think anyone would be a fool not to check you out immediately. <laughs> so, um, Liza, I'm going to thank you so much again for coming on. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. No, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're very welcome. Uh, for everyone else out there, Carry On is out. Listen to it, stream it, check out that music video. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And uh, I sincerely look forward to seeing what else comes out from you. And it sounds like there's a lot on the way. Thank you very much. You're super welcome. Have a great rest of your day. And I hope you run into each other in LA sometime. Yeah, that would be great. Right. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.